All right. So first off, Christian, um, you know, you, you're constantly on tour with your stand up. What would you say it is about D.C. that stands out for you as a city, you know, when you're performing? D.C. is probably my favorite city to do stand up in. Um, I did my first CD here and I actually talk about a little bit on the CD about how everyone is smart, but no one's cool. <laughs> if that makes sense. You know what I mean? It's like it's all the kids from your high school that did like the can drive all moved to one city and so everyone gets all the jokes you don't have to dumb anything down you can go as kind of far flung as you want but you're not going to get like too many hipsters in the audience who are just kind of jaded and you know like sometimes like when i perform in miami you'll see these guys will have sh like reflecting sunglasses on in the showroom <laughs> and it's you know and they're ready to go to the club afterwards and it's like well, that's kind of a drag you know what i mean and so i like being here where uh everyone is affable and kind of nerdy <laughs> you know uh, okay. that's you know they call it what they call DC Hollywood for ugly people uh, <laughs> which I find them all very attractive here but I think the point is that it's got kind of a glamour to it like it's Washington DC it's a big deal but there's no kind of boob jobs and spray tans and stuff Okay. You know. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, well, another thing I, I always like to, you know, uh, ask people that, you know, are in the world of comedy, especially with stand up is when did you come to that epiphany that, you know, comedy was something that you wanted to do? Because if I remember, if I understand correctly, you know, you you attended NYU and, you know, you studied acting and playwriting, if I understand. Yeah. Um, so was comedy always like a major passion of yours or no. were you like really you know keen on comedy. drama i hated comedy like like and i think on some level it was because i wanted to do it on some level but just hadn't come to terms with that okay. I, comedy was in kind of a weird place when i was kind of coming of age it it was kind of all over early cable because when the first days of cable television it was the cheapest thing they could put on so there's just too much of it and there was a lot of real kind of corny the dude wearing the bright purple blazer with the sleeves pushed up in front of the brick wall, you know. And I thought that to be a stand-up comic, that's what you had to be. And a lot of those guys are, and women, they're great comics, but it just wasn't, it didn't speak to me at all. I thought of myself as being deep, you know, and uh, read uh, playwrights and thought <laughs> deep thoughts, and you know, which is ridiculous. Now I tell fart jokes, but I feel like when I came down to it, comedy was... I got to a point in my life where I thought I wanted to be a writer, but I wasn't really doing any writing. I didn't have the discipline for it. There's a certain kind of mentality that can go into a room for two or three years. My wife wrote a book, and you know she, that's a lot of alone time. And I don't have that long-range thinking. I need immediate gratification on some level. And so comedy sort of provides that, because you can write something and find out that night whether it has any uh, legs to it. and But you still have the pride of having written it. So it's it's all the nice parts about being a performer and all the nice parts about being a writer without any of the hard stuff. Uh, <laughs> but um, so it just it was one of those things where you, you see a shirt on the rack and you're like, I don't want to wear that shirt. And then you put it on and you're like, oh my God, this is the greatest shirt ever. That's how I felt about stand-up. Because I... I was in this period where I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I was going to poetry slams, and I was going to sketch comedy shows and improv, and stand-up was the thing I did. The minute I did it, I was like, oh, this is it. This is the thing, you know? Okay. Even though I did sketch comedy for the first two or three years that I did comedy, it was probably 50-50, but stand-up was... And there's also something about being a loner, or being kind of a mercenary, that it's all on you. When it goes well, it's all on you. When it goes poorly, it's all on you. That appeals to me on some level. Um, friends of mine who are actors, or when I've done acting work, it's it's great and it's nice to collaborate, but it's kind of the experience is diluted among all the people. There's so many factors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, whereas stand up, it's as close as you can come to being in control of a creative situation, I think. Okay, all right. In, in Europe, they will write an hour a year like and they will do that show whereas in america it's very different it, you kind of things evolve organically and you work on a new five or ten minutes and then you sort of substitute stuff in almost like a you know a basketball team or something like all right you're out you're in um and the set kind of turns over that way um like i have a new special that's coming out in april and i'm still doing some of those jokes the sort of the tent pole bits 
the 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 closer the big bit in the middle you know but then i fill it in with newer stuff and over time that you know uh eats the old stuff if that makes sense and then without you kind of being fully aware of it oh i have my new 45 all of a sudden um so it hasn't been like an immediate thing okay all right awesome so outside of stand-up you know uh you definitely have a presence on television as well. You know, a lot of people obviously know you from uh, as that character chat from uh, Comedy Central's uh, Dave Chappelle show. Uh, but outside of that, you know, you've been a mainstay on Comedy Central with numerous, you know, uh, comedy specials as a headliner as well as a special yeah, guest. They, they were good to me. Yeah, so uh, how do you find the time to, to do all of it? Because, I mean, you know, that's just like the tip of the iceberg. I mean, you do filming. There's yeah. time. <laughs> There's plenty of time. How do I find the time? Yeah. <laughs> if only you knew. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, it, it, well, because it, all, it looks like a lot when you see it on paper or when you do a Google search or whatever, but it's this month I had this gig and next month I'll have another gig and this year I got on a TV show and next year I won't. And it all just kind of accumulates over time. For me, it's, it's always been very kind of ups and downs and that's one of the things you have to sort of adjust to psychologically mm. is that there's going to be, you're never as good as you at your best and you're never as bad as you at your worst. And you're, mm. when your career is at its height, I think it's important to remember that it's not always going to be like that. And when it's when you get turned down for something or whatever, it's about batting average. It's about the looking at the long haul. And uh, I'm very proud, looking back, that I've been able to do so many things. But there's no guarantee that it'll happen next month. You know, it it, it keeps you on your toes, which is nice. I always say that stand up is in comedy in general. It's like the girl who will have sex with you one night and then won't even look at you the next night. And the next night she will have sex with you. And the next night maybe she'll like go to second base with you. And the next night maybe she'll like, you know, kill your dog. You know, you just, it's, right. you know, for those of us who are attracted to challenging women. <laughs> uh, you'll get a show for that later. Okay. Uh, all right. So, um,. Uh, outside of this show, uh, do you have any? Uh, are you going to continue uh, with a brand new uh, stand-up, or are you, uh, you know, uh, at I'm work actually, on a film project? Or no, I'm actually entering the priesthood next. <laughs> no, I, okay. I, no, I, I that would be much nicer career, like much clearer path. Um, yeah, I mean, nowadays there's no one path. I mean, there's. It used to be very clear. You you go on the road and you get on Carson and then you become a road headliner and then you get your sitcom and it was and only a few people were able to get through that little funnel mm -hmm. but if you did run that gauntlet then your career was kind of put out for you mm -hmm. nowadays there's a thousand gatekeepers and they're all one thousand one one thousandth as influential <laughs> you know so it's all about just continuing to throw stuff against the wall uh, and seeing what sticks uh, and which is one of the things I is a challenge for me is not getting too up or too down like I was saying before and continuing to get back up on the horse and all right well that didn't work let's try this let's try this if I had my druthers I would just do stand up period that's it's the, the the thing that I never get sick of and I always enjoy all the other stuff the pitching TV shows the acting or the you know starting podcasts and all that it can be fun but it's the stand up that is the only thing that I have to do. That's the one thing where if I don't do stand-up for a week, I get cranky. I, I become unpleasant to be around. All the other stuff is financially very helpful and, and you can't discount that. But psychologically, the stand-up is, if I could just do stand-up, that would be a dream come true. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much, Christian. Um, you know, you, you'll be here all weekend. You'll be here until uh, Sunday, uh, so Sunday the 6th. 16th. All right. Well, thank you so much. I thank appreciate you so much. it. I appreciate it. Look at us shaking hands. See this? <laughs>